you have sequence initializing. Initiating new cav viewport. Enemy is assaulting A. Carpet bomb fired. Sector B, under attack. Attention, you have been marked a priority Head threat. Confirmed. I lose. Warning, fuel levels low. Hello, ladies. Leon Trotsky here, bringing you another home front gameplay commentary video amazing sexiness. You know how we do. Back on the home front a little bit, showing you some strategies here with the light machine gun today. We are using the M249 saw. It is a beast if you know how to use it. It does take a little bit of skill. Today I'm not using steady aim, but that will be my number one suggestion if you decide to use this gun is to use steady aim with it. It helps it out tremendously. I do have this sexy gold camo on there and the holographic sight. I would probably recommend the red dot sight if you are going to try out the weapon. Obviously it does take a little bit of time to unlock the red dot sight, but when you do, it does look pretty nice. Um, but today we're playing on Suburb, and Suburb is one of the two flag maps on ground control, which can allow for some really interesting gameplay. But uh, without talking too much about that, it just... We'll get into that as it comes along, but here you see me using this 249 saw, and I want to talk about the strategies that you should use while you're using this gun, because it is a very temperamental weapon, to say the least. It, When you're standing up, and you don't have steady aim on, and you're aiming down the sight, it, this gun jumps all over the place. It has a horrible recoil. If you start to crouch or lay down, it definitely corrects that recoil and makes the gun a lot more manageable. You do start to learn where the recoil might be bouncing around to, but your best bet is to find some sort of center position. As you see on Suburb, I really like this treehouse here. And just kind of hold down long lines of sight, which you can get down some straight fire, and you know that they're going to have to kind of run through. So this center position here, I know that they're going to have to come through left-hand side, either flank all the way around and push into Alpha, or they're going to have to push center right past me, or uh, pretty much go towards Bravo. That, exam that example there is what can happen a lot in this game, is where you kind of shoot behind the guy. And with steady aim, I think it helps out a little bit, increasing the likelihood that you're going to be keeping on target and shooting in front of the guy and leading your target and getting a lot more kills that way. This little pathway here, they just line up in sometimes. And a note for the light machine gun, it really helps a lot to try and catch guys kind of aiming straight. It's just almost like a sniper, you know, you, you don't want to try and trace people going left to right, you'd rather catch people aim, uh, coming to you. So it's really a lot about positioning on the map and where you line up. And you know, some people might hate on me for this spot, and you can see I'm kind of camping and not playing the objective, but we did eventually cap Bravo here, and on a two flag map, if we were able to hold them down, uh, we would have won this uh, base station, but as soon as we, my team ended up capping Bravo, some they ended up kept coming in and capping Alpha, and we get pushed back. But that is one of the uh, interesting things about some of these two base, uh, the two flag maps on this uh, home front game, is it can create some very uh, tense and interesting moments when one of the flags gets capped and then the other one gets, uh, you're double capped and, it, you know, the team's coming back unless you go and cap that flag, so... We do lose the first round here in this overall gameplay. Uh, we come back and obviously uh, destroy in the second round. It is even, isn't even close, so I cut out a lot of that. And then uh, the third round is where we uh, come in clutch, and I uh, come over, take over the game with the cluster bombs for the win. And yeah, I love the cluster bombs. The vehicles are very powerful, but if you can get a cluster bomb in with Penny Pincher for, uh, I believe it's 1380 or something like that, it is pretty ruthless, especially on these non-vehicle maps, but even on the vehicle maps, you can do some damage, like that clip in the beginning that I showed you on those three tanks. It just destroys, I mean, it can destroy heavy tanks in one shot, so definitely something to look forward to as I get picked off there and we get pushed back, so. Um, as I was saying, we did get uh, pretty much destroyed. I'll show you that you look at the scoreboard here, and we are owning them. And one of the strategies that I like to use uh, when it is the end of a round like this, and the rounds are switching to the next set of objectives is to try and push forward and get to the next set of objectives. So I just kind of wanted to show you my example of doing that here. I don't do it successfully, but it is the thought that counts because it does allow me to have some knowledge in 
to where the players are going to be in case I do rush them again. So we can try and push out of our spawn and push towards either one of the bomb sites. I mean, preferably the one that's closer. I like this Bravo bomb site a little bit more, easier to hold down. And it's, you know, the Alpha, they can kind of run straight and miss a lot of your team and get into it. But, you know, I kind of fail here and somebody runs up on me. And those white phosphorus grenades I was using in this, uh, in this game... I don't use them very much, um, I'd rather use C4, but they can do a good job of cutting off uh, cutting off people from getting to a certain spot, and you'll see at a spot later here, after I get this one rush in here, there is a, you know, I, I come up on a bunch of guys just stacked in there, and sometimes it does make sense to just, you know, throw phosphorus grenades. And, you know, one of my ticks about this game, and there's talk about corner campers, and then there's corner campers. Look at this guy, and that's not the only, there's another guy like that later that is literally camping in the corner. <laughs> oh, it is so funny. It's frustrating kind of when you see them, when you see them hiding like that. But, uh, these are, you know, this is an example of how sometimes the 249 is just not going to do it for you. You try and lay down, maybe get a little less recoil on your gun. But, you know, a, a decent sniper there can easily pick you off, so. Something I have started running is maybe steady aim with the thermal goggles. If you could line up a good spot where those thermal goggles, uh, you're going to get a lot of guys, those thermal goggles really help out a lot, so there's definitely something to check out. And the other thing is, you know, using that light machine gun on vehicles, drones, stuff like that, it is a little easier, as I've said once again, with the steady aim. But, you know, taking down drones, all the drones that are up in the air, you can shoot uh, pretty much a full clip will take down a Humvee, so it's something to notice. Here's an example of using phosphorus grenades. I don't know if it works for me, but this is that clutch moment where they cap B, and they're actually beating us here, and I turn the tides uh, pretty much with the blade of my knife. <laughs> you see here, I kind of retreat. I know they're coming at me, and what? Right back at you. One, two. <laughs> it always feels good. I know there's somebody in here, and a little corner camper missed with a knife. You know, this light machine gun actually has a pretty decent hip fire if you're moving around and, you know, against the submachine gun, sometimes you might want to just try and hip fire. It does work. So, definitely something to check out and, you know, get your own skills at and work your, work your way up the ladder. So, once we capped Bravo here, I push forward to just push back anybody that might be right there, that might be pushing in Bravo in just a quick second there. So, you know, you get a couple kills at those choke points here with the light machine gun does a great job of holding people down on I think. I really enjoy this gun. Um, it's just a great change of pace if you're not playing, you don't feel like playing super aggressively, especially on some of these tighter maps uh, where there's a lot of choke points and stuff like that. And so I move back up into the Bravo building and upstairs I feel like I can get a little better thing and I realize that they're pretty far back there now and now it's just pretty much cluster bombing their spawn and preventing them from pushing up on either bomb site. Now that we have them double, ca double capped, uh, it, it's going to be very difficult for them to move out. So you see I get enough points with that cluster bomb, then I get one more kill, and I got enough points for another cluster bomb, and pretty much, once we get them double capped, it's game over, and you just wait till they're not coming, and, you know, with these cluster bombs, my biggest tip is, uh, timing, timing, if you don't see them all lined up, be patient, be patient, wait till, you know, if you have to, wait till it says that you're almost out of fuel, so... You guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. There will definitely be more Homefront to come. I hope they get their server issues fixed because uh, it's, I really want to play with some of my homies. Um, but, you know, just remember, guys, Battlefield had their server issues when it first came out. That game was totally unplayable for the first week, uh, like the weekend and stuff like that. So definitely something to keep in mind. Give it some time. I'm really enjoying Homefront. I don't even remember. My final score was decent in this game, but you know how it goes. Uh, Cluster Bomb for the win. Leon Trask, you guys, till next time. we got some Battlefield. got some more Homefront on the way. Ladies, keep your panties on. You know how we do. <laughs> Over and out, baby.